Hello everybody. I'm Piyush Sharma from Audit Team. So recently one of our vehicles crossed the 1 lakh kilometer mark and as a technology first company this was a celebratory milestone for us. When we got the vehicle back for an inspection the result showed the kind of efforts the teams had put in to deliver a vehicle that was meant to perform in India. The vehicle was perfect mechanically, the vehicle was perfect electrically and the battery was at an unprecedented 90% state of health. This was certainly superior to any ICE vehicle and even to equivalent EVs. So we thought, why not dig a little bit deeper and figure out what it was that made the perform vehicle perform so well over such a long time. And in the process, we also wanted to bust a few myths around electric vehicles. So what follows is a series of videos where we discuss with the teams that made this possible. We will be talking about the different aspects of the electric vehicle such as the battery, the motor, the controller and figure out and try and shed light on what went on behind the scenes, what was the thought process that went into designing these vehicles. So one of the biggest apprehensions most owners and drivers have while buying an EV is the battery of the vehicle. So coming up is Vinod Gupta, the head of quality here at Orti Green, and we will be discussing more in depth about this very topic. So we hope that this answers a lot of questions and also in the process busts myths uh, surrounding the electric vehicles. So sit back and enjoy it. So uh, Vinod sir, I'd like to know what was the vehicle used for? Uh, you know, what was the usage patterns and when was the vehicle sold and how long did it take for the vehicle to reach the 1 lakh kilometer mark? Yeah. So, uh, this vehicle was sold in uh, the month of Jan 23. Okay. And uh, it, uh, usage was started from March 23. Okay. So, this vehicle was being used by one of the caterer in Bangalore. Uh -huh. The team of that caterer right. used to deliver the meals to various companies in and around Bangalore. The daily running was around 250 kilometers and loading was uh, uh, 300 kgs. Right. And normally, uh, the trained and regular drivers used to operate these vehicles. Okay, so the drivers were trained in driving an EV. Yes, That's so sense. these okay. drivers were uh, regular drivers and they were trained uh, to right. drive an EV. Okay, so when we got the vehicle back for an inspection, what exactly did we do? Like, what did we check or uh, you know, what went again, uh, on in the background? Yes, so as you mentioned in the start, uh, we regularly monitor and evaluate our high mileage vehicles okay. for our uh, continuous product improvement activities. Right. And for the same purpose only, we uh, call this vehicle. We right. verified its functional performance. Right. We evaluated uh, uh, the effectiveness of various measures that we have done in the past for improving our product quality. And most importantly, we did the complete uh, performance evaluation of the battery, right. uh, which includes the SOH verification as well as the battery inside condition. So, I mean, I think that's an interesting point that we've evaluated the battery because since it's run 1 lakh kilometers, I'm assuming that the customer thinks that it's time for replacement. So, what does your evaluation tell us? Yes, so I think that was the most interesting part of this study mm -hmm. because you see this vehicle has run for 1 lakh kilometers. But in spite of that, the SOH of the battery is uh, around 90%, which is truly remarkable. Right. Normally, okay. our warranty says that uh, uh, after 1 lakh kilometers or uh, 3 years of battery life, mm -hmm. uh, the SOH may go to the level of 70%. Now, we can okay. see the difference. Right. And then now, you can easily predict that how much more this battery is, battery is going to perform. perform. So, right. initially, the, uh, the apprehension of the customer was same as you mentioned. Absolutely. But yeah. now, yeah. after seeing those results, it was very happy. What do you think are the main reasons that this vehicle has performing like this? I mean, uh, what could you, could you shed more light on it? Is it yes, good manufacturing? Got, is it the driver? What are the main reasons? To yeah, I got your uh, question. Yeah. So, uh, frankly speaking, uh, so far in all of our studies, as well as experiences, we have found several reasons for such right. kind of performance. Okay. And uh, we can bucket all those regions into four uh, broad categories. Okay. Right. So, first one out of that is the outstanding design of the battery. Okay. So, I mean that there has to be an intelligent battery management system software right. for optimal performance of the battery. 
apart from the thermal design, a good thermal design of the battery for efficient utilization of the cells. So that's and the first thing. I'm guessing like our battery management system and everything is all in-house. So we make this battery yes, in-house, yes. right? So that's the thing that we are able to, uh, uh, we are able to deploy those kind of intelligent uh, techniques right. in our software to optimize right. the performance of the battery. Right. So, second point. so that was the first point. The second uh, uh, big factor is uh, battery manufacturing technology. Right. So what I mean is there has to be a refined process of integration, especially uh, our cells and bus bars. Because if you are able to minimize the resistance mm -hmm. across the entire battery pack, then definitely unnecessary energy losses can be minimized. Mm -hmm. And that helps a lot in terms of fixed <coughs> kind of performance. Right. That is the second one. So I guess, I mean, we've, we've taken a long time in R&D and, you know, we do really tell that we should be making vehicles for India. So I guess this is what it yes, means yes. in a technical yes. standpoint. You yes. know? See, so, this is how we're making it for India. Yes, you are right. I think yes. uh, we are uh, taking a lot of advantage of uh, these right. uh, concepts which we have deployed in house. Right. And now we are... And I, I guess it's nice to see that, you know, what happened one lakh kilometers ago when you were designing is actually holding up even now, so I guess so. Yeah, moving ahead. So yeah. Two uh, more points, so yeah. now coming to the third reason, I think yes. the driving behavior is also one of the major factor here. Okay. Because if you are smartly able to utilize the combination of speed, brakes, road conditions, then I think you can leverage the maximum advantage of reason which are making. Right. Right. And that really plays a lot in terms of enhancing the efficiency of the vehicle performance. Right. And so, the fourth. Uh, uh, so, how much do you think has region contributed? Like, how much, like, for example, let's say he's charged 100%. In a day, uh, do, uh, do we map how much yes. region was? Yeah, that, uh, that was also a very good part of the study. Uh, and this vehicle, I would say, on an average basis, it has clocked 15% of region efficiency. 15%? And, and yes, that is the average I'm talking about for 1 lakh kilometers. But okay. in some of the periods, right. it has just to 20%. Okay, that's like 20% more range. By yes. not doing anything almost. Yes. Yes. That's what is the that's, game of EV. That, that's quite impressive. Okay. And, and uh, the last but not the least, the fourth one, that is uh, uh, charging uh, discipline or hygiene, I would say. Yes. So if you are able to maintain the charging guidelines as recommended, right. definitely you can maintain a very good condition of cell balancing. And that, that definitely plays an important role in good life of cells as well as battery life. So I think these are the four, four broad regions which really gives this kind of performance. Right. So when you say charging hygiene, uh, what do you mean like maintaining 20 to 80 percent or? Uh, so what I would say is that uh, uh, there are there are a couple of aspects to it. Right. For example, if you are not driving the vehicle mm -hmm. or it is idle for a longer period of time. So there is a frequency defined. Like okay. after every one month or two months, you have to charge it for a certain range of SOC so that your right. cell balancing remains intact. Most importantly, because as we've discussed in the start, we have developed everything in house, right? right? So in our BMS software, we have inbuilt the process wherein when you are putting a battery, when we are putting a vehicle to an overnight charge, right, and you achieve the hundred percent SOC, right. then there is a automatically balancing is triggered off in the vehicle. Okay. Okay. That's so okay. if if at least in a week, if you are putting the vehicle on overnight charge and right. and and achieve hundred percent SOC, then you will achieve the hundred percent balancing of the battery pack, right. and your performance would definitely be high. Because if all the cells are having equal voltage, then right. definitely unnecessary energy losses would not be there, and you would be getting the maximum ampere R from the battery. So that's right. the game of balance. Interesting. So I mean, once in a while, the hundred percent charge is actually something yes. beneficial. Yes. Yes. To yes. be done. So, all right, so I, okay, so now that the vehicle's completed 1 lakh kilometers and it's a very Indian question, but kitna deti hai, you know, how yes, much so, is yeah, it actually? Good question. So, uh, first part is before giving to that uh, number, right? So, uh, the good part is that uh, this efficiency of the vehicle is increasing with aging. There is also a surprise. You mean it's giving more mileage? More as mileage now, as in more mileage. Giving, yes. So, okay. Uh, and of course, that is, uh, as we discussed, there are several reasons for that. And the current uh, average that we are getting or FECC that we are getting is around uh, 90 watt hour per kilometer. That is also okay. almost uh, very near to our uh, declared mileage, which is right. ARI uh, proven. 
So that translates to how many kilometers per charge? Yeah, right? so it translates to around 110 kilometers per, per charge, charge cycle. Okay. And this is with the kind of load he's already carrying. Yes. He's carrying yes. on an average. 300 kg of average yeah. load that he's carrying. So it is as per that. I mean, I mean, I don't think I've heard of any ICE vehicle whose mileage has improved with aging. But with an EV, this is actually happening. Yes, because in EV, of course, as we discussed, there are several reasons. And apart from that, reason plays an important role if you are right. able to utilize it. Just I would give you one perspective, like in Bangalore, right? right? Average speed is very low. Correct, correct. Yeah. So, so uh, if you are able to maximize the advantage of reason, mm -hmm. like, you are seeing that there is a traffic signal coming up right. after 200 meters away. So instead of applying the brake, you can just release the throttle. Your mm -hmm. average speed is already low. Okay. So your vehicle would be stopped. Of course, at the end, you have to apply the brake. But at the same time, when you release the throttle to the re regenerative braking, you will get the efficiency advantage. So exactly. that is the main concept of... So I guess this is what is the change required while driving the vehicle. This is what a trained EV driver does. Yes. He Yes. Make sure that he's using the infrastructure to his advantage. Yes. That's so that's why I mentioned the point three as a major point of uh, this uh, this particular performance. Right. That if you are having very good driving uh, behavior or driving right. skills as right. per the EV uh, suitability, then definitely you will uh, you will gain a lot of advantage out. So uh, I guess a lot of uh, driver owners or people who own commercial vehicles they have this. Uh, I guess now it's misconception that three to five years down the line, an EV is total scrap. I mean, they believe that the cost of the battery replacement is going to be super high. It's totally not worth that. Uh, so, I mean, what would you like to tell to uh, people who are looking at this video for that reason? You know, just to understand whether or not an EV is a good long-term investment. Oh, yeah, your point, point is very valid. And I think studies of this kind right. are definitely going to give a lot of confidence to not only customers but for the critics right. who have this apprehension that after three to five years we have to replace the batteries there is a high upfront cost that is going to be there after four to five years right so i think uh, with this kind of results that we are seeing we can easily understand right 90 percent soh one like kilometer surely you can test the ice vehicle benchmarks right so I think, of course, this, this is one of the kind of study, but a lot more, more studies has to happen, not only by us, by other industry mm -hmm. uh, groups, so that uh, collectively we can target to bridge the gap between ICE and EV and these applications can be. I think it's a very interesting point to mention that, you know, uh, I guess we are one of the first ones of, that I have heard of, maybe I have not heard of a lot, but to actually give a, a detailed report of what happened for a long-term vehicle. And it would be really nice to see other industry players also, you know, follow suit and be able to help us with this. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, what's our plan of action for this vehicle in particular and for the other vehicles? What yes. have we learned? So, uh, this vehicle will be further uh, yeah. keeping on our radar. We'll okay. be calling it after every 20 to 25,000 kilometers. Okay. But evaluate the performance further and try mm -hmm. to go into deep. To understand more facts and not only this uh, there are a couple of other vehicles which are already in our consideration so we are continuing this exercise regularly on other vehicles that's how the the, the our, that's how uh, the well, the green products are maturing and that's yeah. how industry is also maturing so, right. so i guess i mean there should be a few other vehicles lined up to be yes, close yes, to the yes. one lakh kilometer yes. mark so let's plan for another round of interviews <laughs> absolutely yeah. we would love that yeah so uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, you know, and I guess this answers a lot of questions as to uh, the apprehensions, as you know, rightly mentioned, that people have of what happens to an EV during long-term usage. Uh, I hope uh, you guys like this kind of content and uh, as and when things develop, we'll try to bring in more of that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Vinod. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, thank you. Cheers. Please.